So last week, uh, I made a pour over and dialed in our Burundi Munkazi natural process. Uh, today, I thought we might dial this in on a home espresso machine. This is meant to help you control the variables that you have in your espresso machine and make small adjustments to get really great espresso on a non-commercial machine. Okay, so some things you're gonna need, obviously coffee. And this is really our, our guidepost to when this coffee is dialed in. I'm going to use these flavor notes that our QC team came up with to help me get the, the most balanced shot of espresso that I can using the parameters that this machine lets me use. If you remember, this Burundi Munkasi has notes of plum, raw sugar, milk chocolate, and raisin. And similar to that pour over profile, that plum is gonna be really present up front, but this coffee should have a really um, long lasting confectionery sweetness, as well as this dried fruit sweetness that's really, really nice. And I should experience that in this espresso as well. Let's go over a few of those parameters. The basket I'm using today on this machine is a 16 gram basket. And so I'm going to lock in that variable. I'm going to use a gram scale to help me make sure that I'm always brewing with 16 grams of coffee. And so that variable is set. That's gonna help me make changes to things without just changing everything. The next variable I want to set, especially with these Breville machines, I really like to use the, um, the single shot option the volume that it comes programmed with is still pretty close to the double shot volume that we use in our cafes. But this single shot volume is especially nice when we're dealing with a lower amount of coffee. And again, it takes one of those variables and just locks it in. So when I hit this volume, it's gonna give me just under two ounces of water for this 16 gram portafilter basket. Those are my two variables. My machine is taking care of the rest. It's taking care of my puree infusion. It's taking care of my temperature and it's gonna take care of pressure. I'm going to make sure I have the right amount of coffee in this basket. I'm gonna brew a shot. I'm gonna taste it. And I'm going to use those flavors to tell me what kind of adjustments I might need to make to this machine. My definitions for espresso are around 16 to 22 grams of coffee, brewed under nine bars of pressure between 195, 205 degrees Fahrenheit um, for two ounces out between 20 and 30 seconds. So that's my general goal, but at the same time, just like cooking, there's a range at which each coffee is going to taste its best. And so when we're dialing in our espresso, I'm trying to find that time frame that this coffee is going to taste the best. So what affects how long it takes for me to brew this coffee is going to be my grind size. This shot pulled at 21 seconds. Um, and so, well, we'll give it a taste. I always like to stir my espresso to cool it off. It's easier to experience flavor of things that are cool. Let's give it a taste. It's definitely cocoa, but it was pretty tart up front. And also, it's a little bit salty. And there's that cocoa, but it's not a very long lasting aftertaste. If I get a spike in acidity, not much sweetness and not much aftertaste, that tells me I need to extract more of this coffee. I need to dissolve more flavor particles inside of this coffee. And so, I need this to brew longer. So I'm going to adjust my grind size finer, make sure I'm still using the same amount of coffee, same amount of water. And so the only change that should happen is how long my water spins with this coffee. And so what I'm hoping this is going to do is mellow this acidity, bring out more sweetness and give me a nice balanced aftertaste. So I made a small adjustment, making this grind finer because I was in that range. I was in the range for dose. I was in the definition range for time at just at 20 seconds and the shot wasn't too bad. Uh, so I made a small adjustment and the shot pulled at 23 seconds. That's a really good shot of espresso. 
the plum is smoother as an espresso than it was as a pour over. Um, very creamy in texture, not drying at all as you can sometimes get from coffee with cocoa or chocolatey notes. It's mouth watering there in the finish. Uh, the finish is actually, it's not quite like raisin, it's more like cherry, almost maraschino cherry. It's very sweet even in the finish. Yep, I would say like bright or yellow plum, simple syrup, and maraschino cherry would be my notes on this coffee. Uh, just like we did last time, it doesn't usually happen quite so easily of getting a shot perfect. But if we're paying attention to our parameters and locking in these variables and changing one single thing, which I changed the grind size, we can get really good results. So I'm going to make this coffee even finer now, hopefully to over extract it so I can give you an idea of what it's going to taste like if I actually need to adjust coarser or make this cool faster. So I'm going to try to get a really long shot now. Okay, I made this shot even finer so that it would pull longer, and it did. This shot pulled at 29 seconds. And so we're still in parameter, technically, as far as definitive espresso goes. Like, this is still espresso, but I imagine we're gonna taste a very drastic difference in terms of flavor balance. Very little acidity. Honestly, at 29 seconds, the shot isn't as bad as I thought. I definitely prefer this to the shorter shot. This one's not bad. It's kind of like uh, unripe peach, and that's about it. There's not much to this shot. There's not much unpleasant to it, but there's definitely nothing fantastic about it. So if I was making a parameter for this this coffee, then for, for my own home use, I would say 16 grams pulled between 23 to 26 seconds would be be pretty good. Um, this gives me an idea and it helps me make a great cup of coffee. Just like we can with pour overs, coffee brewing is all about extraction. It's all about flavor balance. And I can use my palate to dial in a coffee and get it tasting its best. So everybody, hopefully you can take a brand new coffee, even if you aren't able to replicate 100% the recipes we put up online, you can use these flavor notes to help you get the most balanced shot of espresso at home. All right, everybody. Cheers and happy brewing, guys.